What is going on, everybody? It's Treeb from Dream Talks here. And today we have the first mock draft for the Jacksonville Jaguars of the season. And I'm joined by a very special guest, my boy, Chance James. How you doing, bro? What up, bro? What up, Tree? It's, it's dope to be back on here again, man. Let's do this. Yeah, I knew I had to get you because I knew you were quarantined. You ain't have shit to do. So I was like, I need to, I need to throw them on the channel. Yeah, man, I'm in the house. This is like the third day. So it's like, it's, it's, getting, it's getting rough. Yeah, you've been having to do at-home workouts, huh? Yeah, man, and that's, that's okay. I mean, it's, it's all right, but I like going outside. Yeah, sure. I feel that. So we're talking the 2020 NFL draft with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, um, Chance, what would you say, I guess, the three biggest needs for the Jags are heading into 2020? Um, run stoppers. Um, a single high safety and corner. I would say the same thing. And a lot of people would throw wide receiver into the mix too, <laughs> like one of the top needs. I think what Gardner has with the wide receivers currently, I think he has good chemistry with them, but I don't think it hurts to, you know, throw another guy in the mix. What would you say about the wide receiver position as far as being a need for the Jags? It's definitely a need. It's not the biggest need though. Um, one thing I've noticed when we went up against the Saints and stuff like that, um, we weren't getting really like open. We we're, we're good at, uh, against like a uh, zone team. We can find the zone, but as far as getting open, man to man, we don't get it. So I feel like we need a receiver too that that can break some angles and get open. I'd agree with that. So. Without further ado, let's hop right into it. The Jags have a lot of draft picks this year. I mean, when I first uh, did the mock draft, I was uh, doing one of – did you do a mock draft simulator or did you just fill it out, like, manually? No, I went on this website where they rank all the draft uh, draft prospects, my position and everything like that, and I just went through and just checked the stats, the, um, like the highlights and – all that good stuff. And then they have um, something on another site where you can, like, look at their draft profile and, like, yeah. get, they get evaluated. So I did that, too. Yeah, I did a little bit of some highlight searching, but um, most of the stuff – I I like the mock draft simulators, but I also think they're kind of unrealistic at times. Like, uh, the first one I did on the uh, Bandspeak website, um, it was, like – Chase Young was there at nine, and I was like, there's no world there's where no Chase problem. Young is there at nine. <laughs> like, That's not happening. But, I mean, I mean, we thought the same thing with Josh Allen. You know, Josh Allen was supposed to go at, like, three. But, I mean. Yeah, Jawan Taylor was supposed to be at eight, so. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, you know, it's the NFL draft. Anything can happen. But let's start things off with round number one. So, the first pick for the Jaguars in the first round for me I have the Jaguars selecting C.J. Henderson, cornerback. I think the Jags need that corner. We discussed it a little bit earlier. Um, especially after Denard, you know, it, it's stupid, too, because Denard decided to decline the team's contract after I recapped every, like, every free agency signing we did. So he's just like, F you, Treve. It doesn't matter what your video content is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Trey Herndon, I think, is a decent guy. I think um, as far as getting as much hate, not like hate per se, but saying that he's, you know, a guy that we really need to get off the field and to upgrade, I think is a little overdrawn out, a little overplayed. But I still think if there's a top-notch corner there, whether that be Henderson or uh, I can never say his name, o Okada, you know, the other from Ohio State, that corner. I think uh, if either one of them – Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if either one of them are there at number nine, I think the Jags should take a chance and use okay. their first first-round pick on a cornerback. Chance, who do you got the Jags selected? So, at number nine, I feel like I feel like C.J. Henderson would be in the back of the first round, but I feel – or middle. I feel like um, we'll get C – we should get C.D. Lamb to pair up with D.J. Yeah. 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 He's what a do you like about CD Lamb? He's a he's a Ramble catch type of guy, and we all know if you watch Jaguar football, 
DJ Chart cannot shake anything. So, um, so uh, I'd say CD Lamb would bring that um, crossing patterns and all that stuff. Throw, throw a dump pass to him when he gets 30 yards, stuff like that. Um, something like DD. Um, but DD, I, I like DD a lot, but we'll see what, 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 what happens with DD. DD, like, every time he gets hit, he, like, gets killed, though. So, I mean, hopefully uh, C.D. Lamb is somebody that could get open, you know, make the moves after the catch and uh, be that guy for us. Now, for the 20th pick for the Jags, um, I went wide receiver for this pick. I went with your guy. I know a guy you're really fond of. I went with Jerry Judy. I think Mm -hmm. Jerry Judy um, is very capable. He's a physical wide receiver, but he also has run after the catch ability. And, you know, lately he's been falling in these mock drafts from, like, all these experts, I guess, and people that do the mock drafts. He's been falling recently. So I think that if the Jags are going to have to take a shot at getting a wide receiver, they're going to have to do it at 20 because I think corner is more of a pressing need. And uh, I like the idea of Henderson and Judy uh, back-to-back. Who did you have the Jags getting at 20? The great thing is I got C.J. Henderson at <laughs> I so we're kind of on the same page. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. Yeah, I didn't know Jerry Drew was falling in the draft. But I thought he was going to go top ten. Um, they say he's the best wide receiver prospect since Julio Jones. So somebody's going to get him before fifteen. I, I know it. I know it. Somebody. Yeah. Gonna get him. Well, it's weird because Jerry Judy recently has been falling, and C. D. Lamb has been skyrocketing up. Like C. D. Lamb's been kind of the guy that everybody's talking about now, and Jerry Judy's kind of taking that backseat. Yeah, um, C.D. Lamb's a bigger guy. Well, I think of the guy. C.D. Lamb is 6'2", 190. Like, he can, he, I don't think he has too much injury history. So his, his pro con- on comparison was OBJ. And we all know OBJ healthy is ridiculous. So It's game over for that. All right, why don't you start off with who you had the Jags getting in the second round? Okay, so um, we have second round Ashton Davis. Uh, he's a, a do it all safety from Cal. Um, his uh, his uh, NFL comparison with Earl Thomas, and uh, he's a he's a real smart like smart safety, he's one of those type of guys. Um, so he, I can I can definitely see um with the route that the Jaguars are trying to go to, um with a. Uh, Getting all the big names out of there, getting humble guys in. I think he fits right into that scheme. Yeah, we we talked about that a little bit. And the uh, second round for me, I had the Jaguars selecting Javon Kinlaw. He's a run-stopping defensive tackle. Um, he's a big boy. I think that, uh, you know, with some additions the Jags currently made in uh, Rodney Gunter and Al Woods, uh, they both kind of fit that mold, but – you know, those are big boys, and Avery Jones as well. They're going to get tired. You're going to need to bring in somebody that could come in and fill in for them, you know, whether that be in third down situations, first and second down. And uh, from what I've seen from Ken Law's tape, I think he has all the potential to do that. In fact, I think he's a, I think he's a three-down player too. I think he really has that kind of potential. But, um, yeah, I think he definitely has that in him to be a rotational guy in the Jaguars, in the Jaguars system. Who do you got the Jags getting in the third round? So the third round, like I said, we're on the same page. We have a big body guy named Raekwon Davis, D tackle from Alabama. 6'7, 310 pounds, run stopper, pass rusher as well. Um he's a huge guy. He's a little bit of character issues, but nothing too serious. Um yeah, nothing too serious like on, on his end. But he he been solid for Alabama for a while, so I like him. And he's a huge guy, like a Kalez Campbell type body type guy. Yeah, and you know that's that thing that's kind of what we're looking for at this point is just, you know, a big guy. Um I think Rodney Gunter's gonna kinda be that guy for the Jags this year to kind of replace, you know, Calais Campbell to be that big end player. Uh, DeWan Smoot, too, I think he has some size. He doesn't have the height, obviously, of Clayus Campbell. But I think size-wise, I think he, he might be able to fill in for that nicely. Yeah, he plays more of like a finesse game. He's a bigger guy. He's slightly bigger than uh, yeah. He looks way bigger, but he's just slightly. He's like probably 20, 30 pounds uh, heavier than Yon. 
Um, probably the same height. Um, but yeah, if he gets more physical, we'll be good. Yeah. All right. So the fourth round, the Jags have three picks. So my first pick for the Jags in the fourth round is a man I'm really excited to say we're going to draft. And that is going to be bringing in another Mike Leach quarterback. Jaguars select Anthony Gordon, quarterback, Washington State. Anthony, <laughs> Anthony Gordon plays the same game as Gardner Minshew. And if Minshew is truly the guy you're going to roll with in 2019, I mean, in 2020, then Anthony Gordon's the perfect guy to kind of take off the bench and say, hey, go out there, play his game. It's more of what Gardner does in the pocket and as a thrower that they're similar. Uh, Anthony Gordon's not going to make, you know, the runaround plays that Gardner Minshew makes. But he does have a good arm. He has a he – has, he always makes a good, smart reads. He didn't throw a whole lot of interceptions last year. And, you know, he's coming from a Mike Leach system where he's asked to throw the ball a lot. So I think if we're looking for a reliable backup quarterback, let's try and just sneak one in in the fourth round, especially if we don't get, you know, Cam Newton or Jameis Winston, and see uh, see what happens there. Who do you got the first pick in the fourth round for the Jets? Mm, um, so I have, I have a Solomon Kinley from Georgia. He's a guard, 6'4", 330. He's from Jacksonville. Um, he, they say he's a plug and play guy. That's what I look for as far as my, my, my lineman. Plug and play guy, run block, pass block. You both, he's good. We can get AJ Cannon out of there. Well, that's, and, that's and I was actually looking at him too for one of my uh, fourth round picks. Mm-hmm. And uh, he could kind of be like that Tyler Shatley type of player. Tyler Shatley is kind of like that Swiss Army knife that the Jaguars bring in if somebody goes down or if somebody gets hurt. And, you know, I think, yeah, he could replace A.J. Can. And I'm hoping for a big turnaround for Andrew Norwell. I know we kind of talked about that a little bit in our last video together, but if Norwell really pieces it together, Jawan Taylor continues to play well, Cam Robinson does too, and they add some depth there, this offensive line can improve in a hurry, I think, with just the guys that they have. Yeah, um, Granny Leonard needs to stop holding. And, yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. True. Um, Brad and Brandon Leonard and Cam Robinson are the whole thing. Uh, but no, I, my thing is we can't get pushed when we have to, like, on third and two or goal line or anything like that. Like, you can't get pushed. And that's why, then for that, we had three touchdowns this year. Yeah. He had yeah, a thousand yards for three touchdowns. We got to do something about the red zone for sure. I feel like he'll help you get a, a good push. Um, yeah, a good push. So, yeah. All right. And the fourth round is kind of where I got a little, I guess, greedy kind of picking players that I personally really like and I want the Jags to take. So, with that being said, even after the Tyler Eifert signing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to this. This is Mock Draft 1.0. There will be other, other, uh, other mock drafts. But for my 1.0, I got the Jaguars selecting Thaddeus Moss tight end out of LSU. You know, a lot of people say that the reason he's even projected to get drafted might just be because of his father, and I get that. But you look at what he has done, whether that be in the college football playoffs during the regular season, if you watched LSU play, like, at all, Thaddeus Moss was a big part of that offense. And the fact that he's still, you know, considered, like, a third, fourth-round pick, I think is ridiculous. I think you get – you get him a – you give him a chance to learn from a guy like Tyler Eifert. You got other tight ends that have been around the team for a while that know, you know, what it's like to play in Jacksonville, like James O'Shaughnessy. You know, you put him around a bunch of guys that can teach him really how to be an NFL caliber tight end, then he is going to be that player. So my second pick in the fourth round is going to be Thaddeus Moss. Who do you got, Chance? My, yeah, I like him. My knock yeah. on him, I'm going to let you go. My knock on him is his side. I think he's like 6'2". Yeah, like, but you like, can split him out wide, though. It depends. Yeah. It depends on what Jay Gruden's going to try and run this year, because I guess we really don't know what kind of what kind of stuff Jay Gruden's going to be up to this season. But yeah, I mean, he's definitely a good receiver. Like, he, he's like the in between guy, like a a big slot or like yeah. a small tight end. It's, it's it's weird, and that's probably why people have kind of like doubts with him, like. Like like Isaiah Simmons, they don't have doubts about him because he's just an athletic group, but they don't know where he's going to go. 
Yeah. So it's kind of like, where do we put this guy? Um, but um, for my second fourth round, I have Devon Hamilton, Ohio State uh, D tackle. He's 6'4, 327, six sacks last year. So he's a run stuffer. He has a body type as a run stuffer, but he can get to the pass rusher. I think that's what we really need. Those rotation guys, Taylor Brown, Avery Jones, Gunther, all like our rotation would be crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Taven yeah. Bryan's a guy I forget about like quite often. Yeah. But yeah, he you know, when Taven Taven sometimes like shows flashes like why he was a first round pick, but then sometimes yeah. it's like, God, that's such a Taven Bryan move. It's like you know, yeah. he's very in between. I feel like that D tackle spot is like a is where like you know it, it goes it goes unnoticed. Like he his job is to plug up the, the holes and take away the cutback lane. So when the running back goes to the left and has to shift to the right or has to pause, that's Taylor Bryant. But nobody really like he doesn't make a tackle, so it's like mm. but he like he he does the job for the most part. Um, he he can definitely get but hopefully he take, he takes some DJ chart jump. Um, if he takes a chart jump, then then he will stick with him. But um, well, I, I think the big thing was is the fact that he kind of started off as a defensive end, and we didn't really put him inside until you know later on in his second year, I think even. So yeah. I mean, like, I think that was kind of his problem. He's more of a natural defensive tackle, so I think when he you know plays there, I think he he gets more of his credit. Yeah. Um, so. My third pick in the fourth round, I took a while to draft a safety, but I decided to do it in the fourth round. Um, I'm going to take J.R. Reed. Um, I did a little bit of film study on him, and uh, the only thing that I really realized with him is that for a safety, he doesn't really have that much speed, but he has good ball in sense. So he knows where the ball is going to be like in the air, it's just like the true sideline to sideline speed that you need to have as a safety in the NFL. He kind of lacks that, but what he lacks in speed, I think he makes up in football instincts, and he has a lot of those. So, um, as for a fourth round pick, I think that's why he's projected so low. Otherwise, I think he'd be a I think he'd be a higher rated uh, safety in this year's draft. And the safety class in this draft is also kind of stacked. So, there's going to be some guys that get lost in the shuffle, and I think he's going to be one of those guys. And if the Jags are able to snag him up, I think that's going to be a diamond in the rough for sure. Who do you got? Okay, so I got a legit diamond in the rough, man. I don't think anybody heard of him before. He's from Wyoming. Yeah. Um, he's 6'2", 240. Uh, his name is Logan Wilson. This guy this guy has 400 tack- career tackles. 400 career tackles as a linebacker, 10 interceptions. Yeah, I'm getting him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's projected but, that low? He's projected like a fourth yeah. round pick? And it's like, like great size, great production. Man, it, it hit his um, pro composite, pro comparison was uh, Joe Sherbert. Joe Schobert, yeah. And that's perfect. I mean, uh, perfect. Perfect. Like, yeah. Perfect. So is he, is he a middle backer or is he an outside backer? Um, I think he's, like, he's more of a – a middle, um, but I think he can play strong. I think he'll he'll be ready for Rim Strong, um, Joe Middle, Miles, the weak side. Well, I mean that's wow. That's like fuck. I might have to throw him in like all round fours of my 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 mock draft because that's insane that he's even getting projected that low and he's got that production. And I mean yeah. linebacker, linebacker is a big thing. And, I mean, like, the Jacks kind of have to make up for the mistake they made with Quincy Williams. And mm-hmm. if they were able to, you know, draft this guy in the fourth round, you know, that kind of makes up for everything. Because those are, like, Telvin Smith productions. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, Telvin Smith was that guy, like, athletic. He didn't have great size, but, I mean, the tackles spoke for themselves, you know. Mm-hmm. He, he got that production for sure. I feel like, um, man – I feel like the reason why the linebackers lack so much is because, well, they're inex- inexperienced, of course, but the D tackle, like the D tackle spots, when they get blown off the line, you you you're supposed to shoot the gap. If they get blown off the line, it's kind of hard to 
dissect this thought, especially when you're younger, a lot of younger linebacker. And Quincy Williams is a safety from a small yeah, school. Right? Exactly. He wasn't even a, a true linebacker. So we can't expect him just to come into the NFL, start at linebacker, and just ball out. So I feel like he might be able to grow into it, but we'll see. I don't want to wait. So coming up next, we got two picks in the fifth round. Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't you start this one off? Who did you have for the Jags' first fifth round pick? Okay, so I got um, a running back since Leonard Fournette won a post. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> want to take down his post and stuff. I got, I got a running back in the fifth round named AJ Dillon, uh, Boston College. Uh, he, he's six foot, two forty seven, big guy, running four five three. Um, 14 touchdowns, 1,600 yards. He, he's a bell cow, to say the least. I mean, he's a huge guy. He's bigger than before I met. About like 17 pounds, if that. Damn. Not. That was a big boy then, huh? Yeah. Damn. So, I decided to go and get another corner. I think if there's going to be a position battle in training camp this year, it should be at the cornerback position. Because I think the Jags have – a lot of corners, and I think they're going to get more uh, from the draft. You know, some that can play. Like, I think DJ, Hay- DJ Hayden clearly has a spot on the roster. But then you got people that are kind of on that bubble, you know, like Trey Herndon. Like, what is he actually going to do? You know, let's put some rookies here. Let's put some free agents here. Let's see. Let's have a competition. And I picked Josiah Scott. Um, not too much to say about him other than the fact that I think uh, – you know, adding him to the room and adding some competition to that cornerback position, I think, is a huge thing uh, for what the Jags need to do in training camp. And I think there's a lot of positions that the Jags really need to do that in. And that's kind of why I picked, you know, like an Anthony Gordon in the fourth round. We need to, like, draft a backup quarterback to kind of give Josh Dobbs some competition. Because, you know, Josh Dobbs isn't necessarily the best option at the backup quarterback. But if you got those competitions going on in training camp, then. That's what you need to get. Okay. Okay. Corner. What school did he go to? He went to – let's see. If I can exit out of my notes. Yeah. Barn in the background says we need to get Cody Kessler back. What do you think about that? <laughs> Man, no. <laughs> Good. Somebody on Twitter had a uh, rip off of Blake Bortles facts, and it was uh, – Cody Kessler facts. And I'm like, those aren't even funny. Damn, Cody Kessler. Yeah. I, yeah. I huh? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, nah, I was saying I remember uh, being hopeful when, Cody, when they replaced Blake Boys before Cody Kessler. I was going to remember he – I think he played in the Texans game. He, he, like, he scored that one touchdown. I'm like, okay, we might be legit. Next yeah. game, I'm <laughs> No. Uh, Josiah Scott went to Michigan State, and Mel Kuyper actually said in an interview recently that he might be Michigan State's best draft prospect, and he's a fifth-round projected guy. So a lot of upside there for him. Okay, okay. Michigan State, I might have to check him out. Okay. All right. Um, that, was your third, that was your second fifth-round? No, no, that was our first. Yeah, your first. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, me, I have my second six-round pick. LSU again with Sadiq Charles. He is Cam Robinson's replacement if he if he messes up. So this guy, um, he's what six four, three twenty one. Um, he's a great athlete. He's a he can run, he can pull, all this type of thing. He might be like another Tyler Shatley type guy. Um, he's an athletic lineman that can play anywhere we want him to. But um, he has he has good upside. He has really good upside and a low price point because he's a fifth round. So that's my guy. All right. So my next pick, my second pick in the fifth round is a edge rusher, another edge rusher to bring to the fold, and that's going to be DJ Wanham. W-O-N-N-U-M. My pronunciation skills are not on point. He goes to South Carolina. Um, He's more known 
for what he does against the run than necessarily pass rush. Last year he only got uh, four and a half sacks, so not that much production. But, you know, we keep talking about guys that we need against the run. We need some good run defenders, and I think he brings that kind of production. And, uh, you know, it's wild looking at these guys' as birthdays because they're, like, almost the same age as me, which is – I just yeah. realized that when I, when I looked at this dude's birthday. But uh, who would you have in – your second fifth round pick. Or did you already go? Oh, yeah, you already, yeah, you already, you already went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. In the sixth round, who did you have going first? All right. So this is one of my, like, I like this one. So Kobe Parkinson, um, he's a tight end. Uh, he's 6'7", uh, 252. He runs a 4'7", 40 at 6'7", 252. At 6'? And, and he's known for his great hands. So my thing is, he can he can run and he has great hands. So it's like they said he need to work on his uh, route running or whatnot. Um, but we can work on that. That's what coaches are for. Uh, but as far as like, uh, red zone, we we we've been lacking in the red zone. I feel like Tyler Eifert and uh, grooming Kobe Parkinson and Josh Oliver. That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a good one. All right, my first pick in the sixth round is going to be my running back selection. And um, something that I really think that we missed last year that not a lot of people are going to talk about and maybe not a lot of people are going to agree with me, but is a guy like Corey Grant. Corey I'm, Grant and, like, TJ Yeldon. Yeah. They were a great change of pace back from what Leonard Fournette was. And even, like, in special teams, like the fake punts, all that stuff. I really think the Jaguars missed a guy like Corey Grant. So that's yeah. why in the sixth round, I got the Jaguars selecting Michael Warren the second, a running back out of Cincinnati. He's not okay. too undersized, 5'11", 222 pounds. Oh, yeah, that's good. Coming in, he has uh, 2017, he didn't play, 2018, 2019. Uh, back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. In 2018, he had 1,300 yards, 19 touchdowns. Um, his career average is five point – or no, his career average is six yards a carry. So, I mean, that's wow. uh, that's that's a type of running back that the Jags need to bring in. He's not getting oh. highly touted right out of college, but, you know, a change of pace back from what Leonard Fournette is, I think, is what the Jaguars need. So, that's why I have the Jags in Michael Yeah, and I like Armstead, too. I like Armstead. I do, um, too. But he's kind of the same back as Leonard, I would say. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. Like, that would be a good little three-headed uh, monster or whatnot. Um, I like that. I like that pick. Um, uh, my sixth rounder, my second sixth rounder is Travis Gibson uh, from Tulsa. He's a defensive end. So what I like about him is he's a Josh Allen type of guy. Um, he's a Josh Allen Bill. He's 6'3", 255. He had eight sacks, so um, he has good production. Slightly smaller school, but I feel like with Duan Smoot and Josh Allen in the fold, they can groom him, they can help him out because they're all the same base, they the same size. They can, they can teach him the ropes, um, and he can definitely be a, a solid guy and probably a diamond in the rope as well um, at the defensive end spot. For sure. So my second – um, sixth round pick is going to be a guy that I didn't think was going to be here and I kind of forgot about him. Um, not a lot of people are going to know who he is. Jared Hilbers, he's an offensive tackle from Washington. So mm -hmm. I've watched this guy the last three years play in the Apple Cup and just dominate. Whatever defensive end from Washington State was across from him, completely just wreck him. And um, his technique is flawless. Like, if you, like, look at – uh, Jacob Eason highlights, who's the quarterback from Washington that's going to be getting drafted. And if you look at the offensive line play that's going on around him and you look at their left tackle, which is Hilbers, and you see his technique, you see his form, I honestly think, like, this this could be a diamond in the rough in the sixth round. And hopefully, like you said, you already selected somebody if the Cam Robinson thing doesn't work out. Hopefully, Hilbers can be that guy if the Jaguars end up selecting him. Okay. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's that shit. 
All right, seventh round, final pick for the Jags. So how many picks the Jags have? Twelve. Twelve. Well, I think Twelve. Yeah, that's wild, man. Yeah. Draft night's gonna be busy. Yeah. All right, who do you got for the seventh round? All right, so this guy kind of reminds me of like a Debo Samuel type guy. He's a receiver. He's bigger though. He's um his name is Kendrick Rogers from Texas A and M. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. That's who Six I had four. in the seventh round, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so take yeah. it away. Explain why he's our seventh round pick. <laughs> yeah, he's great size, 6'4", 208. Um, they say he has great um, hands. He uh, – oh, he needs help with rock running, just like the tight end I pick, but um, that's, that's coachable. He runs a four five one, so he's not slow, especially for his size. Um. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it says his stats lack a little bit in production because of the quarterback situation. I think he had, like, two or three quarterbacks in his career. So, it's like – so, that, that, that can definitely um, mess up your stats. But uh, as far as the athlete goes, I feel like he's a good, solid number three guy in the slot, big guy in the slot. That's what I liked about him too, and that's so funny that the one pick that we got the same was a seventh round pick. But um, I literally like that's when I was looking at him and I was looking at his tape. Like, I mean, he just has ginormous hands. Like, I mean, if it hits him in the hands, like he's gonna come down with it. And uh, like you said, his stats aren't anything to really write home about. But you know, that's coachable. You know, it's coachable with his route running, and Keenan McCardell is a great receiving coach. He's uh, he's proved it. I mean, you look at guys like T.J. Chark, who made a huge stride last year. D.D. Westbrook continues to improve year after year. You know, Chris Conley had statistically his best season last year. So, I yeah. mean, Keenan McCardell, if you just give him, like, a wide receiver that kind of just needs a little bit of coaching, there's no one better to do it in the league, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I feel like our, our right receiver core is – very underrated. Um, and you know me, I'm, I'm a researcher when it comes to this type of stuff. I think we're like the probably the only like probably top five, top three uh right receiver core that three of our receivers had over six hundred and fifty yards. Yeah. Like receivers. So it's like we got potential for sure. We just gotta score. That's it. That's literally it. Like and that was you know, we talked about the red zone issues a little bit two with Leonard Fournette only having three touchdowns. I think that's where it starts. You know, Lambo's a great kicker, and it's cool when he makes field goals, but it's not cool when he, you know, attempts and kicks 28, 29 field goals. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, we need – like, if we're in that range, we're in the red zone, we definitely need to score. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. a big, big thing this season. Yeah, I feel like we have the big body guys, but nobody really going up and getting it I'm just – Besides T.J. Chart, he's the only one that can go up and get it. Conley, he has that frame. He has the – like, statistically, he has the vert forward. He has, like, he jumped, he jumped like, a 40-plus vertical. But he just doesn't play like that. So, um, you got to find a guy who can just get, jump out the gym, go get it in the red zone. You got to find a guy. Yeah, I think that's going to do it for our mock draft 1.0. Chance, you got any parting words before we sign off? Um, no, man, I appreciate you having me, man. Um, yeah. Oh, we need to talk about the uh, undrafted free agents since we we're pretty good at that, too. That would be cool. <laughs> the undrafted free – dude, the Jags always pull somebody ridiculous out of undrafted, dude. I mean, yeah. Keelan Cole. I mean, like yeah. – well, that's, that was another thing that I was going to say, too, is, like, Keelan Cole used to have that, like, the go up and get it, like, mentality, and then out of nowhere, it was just, like, nah, fell off. We got to get, get him consistent. He can be the – like, I always say, like, if the Patriots got him or something, he'll be a dog. Oh, he'll dude, be, for be, real. So, like, he, he – he, he's definitely a wide receiver, two type of guy. He has that type of talent, but – you got to do something with it. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in to the NFL Mock Draft 1.0. Make sure if you haven't already, you can check on links down below. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. 
Also, you can follow Chance at your ch- – you do it. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> your Chance Fit on Instagram, on Your Chance Fit, just anywhere, Twitter, Snapchat, Apple TV, all that good stuff, Your Chance Fit. Follow them there. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're going to be coming at you guys with mock drafts probably biweekly or weekly until the NFL draft comes to a head. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.